My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Hearthstone Arena. We are not going to pay any attention to the requests that we currently have. Because we threw Last Arena and it was painful. Um, we've played Warrior recently, we've played Rogue recently, and we played Hunter literally last episode. Do I want to play another Rogue? Yeah, man. Bring that shit. Okay. Mountain Giant, barely playable. If you top deck it in the late game, you often don't have enough cards to actually play it, ever. Uh, Echoing Ooze is basically 2-4. It's pretty good. Echoing Ooze is pretty good. Uh, Patient Assassin can only be cleared by AoE and gets to kill. Does get to kill. So, I'm going to take the Patient Assassin. I think that's really worthwhile. I'm going to take the Assassin's Blade just because it has an incredible amount of value. Same with the backstab, because you amount, uh, with the backstab you allow yourself to get an early curve that your opponent can't deal with. Deadly Poison, very similar. You get to remove stuff from your opponent's board to the point that they can't deal with yours. Acolyte of Pain is really good. Assassin's Blade or Deadly Poison? Um, I think since this Assassin's Blade has four strikes, uh, that Deadly Poison is actually more worthwhile. Because if I have both Assassin's Blades, I'm not going to be able to play both. Sinister Strike does 3 damage to the enemy hero. Useless card. I'm going to say it. Useless fucking card. You can combo it with a bunch of stuff, right? It's really good in Miracle decks uh, when your goal is to cast as many cheap spells as possible. But dealing 3 damage to the opposing hero, I would rather play a 3 health... Uh, sorry, a 3 damage minion and just hit the opposing hero 10 times, right? That's 30 damage from 2 mana in... Okay, right. So that's a stupid circumstance that's not going to happen but still way better than sinister strike um i'm going to take an assassinate for dealing with things that you can't deal with no mission venture is card draw also a fan of knives as card draw and it's a little bit of board clear i'm completely aware of that but um also mm -hmm. uh, i'm going to take the dark iron dwarf because it allows my acolyte of pain and my acolyte of pain um and any other cheap minions that i end up getting to trade up which is really really important Head crack is horrible, so it is immediately disregarded. I want to take the Sun Fury Protector as some of my early play, but I already have three, ver four very solid early plays. Um, although backstab costs zero mana, so it's not exactly a development. Um, Master of Stealth, give a friendly minion stealth. Honestly, if I'm competing for the board and not competing for aggression, that's useless. But if I am competing for aggression, it's very useful. With my current build, I could go Aggression or I could go for the face. So I think Sun Fury Protector protects my ability to go for the face or go for the uh, minions. Shadow Step is really bad in Arena. Most of the time. Uh, because how many times are you going to have an incredible battle cry that you really, really want to play again? And that's worth playing a card to play again. That's really important. Oh my god, I want to use the Gnomish Inventor battle cry again. Two mana, draw a card? Crazy! But it costs me a, a card as well. So I'm not actually ending up in the front. Uh, Stoneskin Gargoyle, well, it just doesn't have enough stats for three mana. So I'm going to take the Assassin's Blade, especially with two Deadly Poison. That's actually looking really solid to me. Uh, so here's the point where I actually look at the Priestess of Loon and go, hmm? And you might be wondering why, and so am I. Uh, the reason I'm looking at the Priestess of Loon and I'm going, mm, maybe, uh, is because I'm going to be attacking with my face a lot. Look at those two Deadly Poisons. Look at those two Assassin's Blades. I would like to be able to heal my face just a little bit. And if I can justify that by picking up a 6 plus card, because I have no 6 plus cards before I pick that up, okay. I'll take an Eviscerate because it's Primo Removal. All of these are bad except for the Frost of Warlords, so that's a pretty easy choice. Fan of Knives versus Deadly Poison. I don't have any um, spell damage, and spell damage makes Fan of Knives infinitely more valuable. Because think of it like this. You've got one spell damage on the board, right? And Fan of Knives suddenly becomes crazy, right? Drain life to all opponents, you know, whatever. Two mana, two damage, sorry, two damage to all opponents. Cool. You have two on the board, it suddenly becomes like a lightning storm that's procking high. You have three on the board. God forbid that you get that in Arena, but if you have three on the board... Well... 
suddenly you have a flame strike. That type of thing. Uh, Deadly Poison, although, is more consistently good. So there's the Cobalt Geomancer with the spell damage that I was talking about. Um, another Deadly Poison or a Spectral Knight. I do have a very high respect for Deadly Poison, especially if I Deadly Poison an Assassin's Blade. I can just kill the opponent straight to the face. Doesn't matter. Um, but a Spectral Knight is actually really important to develop a minion on five. If I didn't already have three Deadly Poisons, I would definitely take the Deadly Poison. I'm going to take the River Crocolis there. Zombie Chow, fuck yes. The Agre- Oh, Blood Cell Raider is really good as well. But Zombie Chow can be played on one. And even though I have a lot of things on one, none of them are one drops. Because I need to have a weapon out before I can play the Deadly Poison. So therefore, Zombie Chow is the best. Yep. It's the best around. Ain't nothing ever gonna keep it down. Um, again, I'm gonna take the Priestess of Balloon for the same reasoning that I took it last time. Knife Juggler, how many early plays do I actually have? Zombie Chow, Backstab, well, Z Backstab doesn't really count, right? You play it in the early game, sure, but it doesn't cost you any mana. Zombie Chow... Patient Assassin, River Crockle, is Sun Fury Protector. I could have more, um, but the Sludge Belcher is just way too high value, right? I need to take the Sludge... Yep, I have to take that Deadly Poison because the rest were trash. No Inventor. I would really like some very solid, uh, some very solid three drops. Maybe a Harvest Golem or something similar. Backstab, yes. Basically, my opponent is not going... Oh, I can't Death Lord. Death Lord can be good, but Death Lord could basically end my game as well. So I'm going to take a Gadgets and Auctioneer instead. Do I take a Conceal? My Gadgets and Auctioneer. Um, I'm... Because my 5-drop slot is actually full of minions already and full of plays, uh, and Conceal actually isn't super valuable, I'm going to take the Sap so that I can remove a big dude back to their hand and just continue my aggression without them being able to do anything about it. Uh, again... Because I have so many fives, I'm going to take a Dread Corsair because it's so valuable now because I can play it on one mana if I have a Deadly Poisoned Weapon or a Assassin's Blade out. Or I can play it for free if I have an Assassin's Blade out with a Deadly Poison. Or I can play it for free if I have a normal weapon with two Deadly Poisons on it. So it actually has far increased value. Imp Master is a really good three and I need to respect my curve, so I'm not going to be taking the Ravenholt Assassin. Uh, I'm going to take the River Crocolisk just because the rest of those suck shit. Sprint for the late game? You know what? I think I'll make it to late game, so we'll take a sprint. And to round out the deck, um, I can't take a Mana Wraith because it'll fuck my Mana Curve more than my opponent. So therefore, I'm going to take a Questing Adventurer. Uh, we are very let down by our three and four drop slots, but other than that, we have some fucking primo removal and control, and we can go ruthless aggression if we really want to. I would have liked to see a few more eviscerates. Uh, I also would have liked to see a few more good, solid three drops. I did try and pick every single one that was offered to me, but ultimately, I'm pretty happy with this deck. I am going to say that this deck is going to go eight wins. That is my prediction. Eight wins. So when we go 0-3, who do I have to blame? He's got two thumbs. Yay, this guy right here. <laughs> no, when we go 0-3, uh, I... Well, I'll turn the camera off and cry for a while, and then I'll come back and I'll tell you the name of the deck. How's that? Backstab stays in my early hand. Yeah. Questing Adventurer? No. No. I need to... I actually need to draw some of my early plays. Even if it's just a Deadly Poison. So... Fairy Dragons are gonna suck for us. Because we really want to be removing... Excuse me. We really want to be removing their dudes while developing our own. Using backstab. And if he plays a fairy dragon, I can't fucking do that. Uh, okay, do I play this slow or fast? Slow would be using the dagger mastery to hit the murloc tidehunter. I'll play it slow. Here we go. 
fast would have been playing the River Croc and then using Backstab to kill the Murloc Tide Hunter. Maybe that was way, way, way more correct. No. Not considering that play. Okay, so I'm going to coin the Gnomish Inventor as a response to the Jungle Panther. Because I get to kill that with my hero ability. Coin the uh, Gnomish Inventor. I've already gotten value out of the Gnomish Inventor. Just by pure fact. <gasps> you fucker! Here we go. You saw me hover over it and drag... So I would have already gotten value out of the Gnomish Inventor just by the fact that I played it. And that would have meant that it was a good play. I might lose the game off of the back of that. <laughs> it's time for a little blood. And that would be hilarious. Alright. I I have a pretty good response. So, questing adventurer. Deadly poison. Look how careful I'm being with my cards, guys. The reason that's a good response is because his response to that can only be Wrath for 3 plus Hero Ability or Swipe. Or Starfall for the direct damage, right? Okay. That is fine by me. Spectral Knight. Now, I do have the Precessor Balloon to heal myself up. That's pretty good. Also, if he wants to use the Stranglethorn Tiger to kill this, then he can swipe this and then use the Hero Power. Maybe? Maybe that's the thing he does? I don't know. We'll see. I don't think he can afford to slow down. I think his trade needs to be, with you know, barring any hand fuckery, um, I think his trade needs to be to kill the questing adventurer. Alright, then he has swipe. I will kill that with my weapon. Yeah, it's swipe. <clears throat> and then I played the Priestess of Loon because it is on curve. Uh, I can sprint next turn, but that would require my Priestess of Loon being able to trade for whatever he... I, I mean, I really just want to have the advantage on the board if we I can. Must cleanse the sun well. Yeah, I actually have the perfect amount of mana for this. Okay, uh, Gnomish Inventor into Frostwolf Warlord seems like a really good play for me at some point. Not right now, but at some point. I also do have another, uh, Precess of Balloon in my deck to heal me up a little. I would have also liked to see some, um, Earthen Ring Farseers actually offered to me. That would be nice. At this point, it looks like I have to trade my Dark Iron Dwarf into that as well as my Wicked Knife. So I might sprint just to try and get the backstab. Do I still do it? That's risky. Or I could just direct assassinate. I'm gonna go for the direct assassination. Because the sprint is too risky. I don't like that play. Yeah, because it means anything bigger that he plays is now way more of a problem. So now I need to sprint this turn. I need to sprint for backstab, basically. Deadly poison works as well. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Okay. I need to stabilize my health situation badly. 
Because at this point, I could be swept to the face twice, or I could be star-fired to the face, and then hero-powered to death. Just horrible things could happen to me. How am I going to kill that guy without using my face? Oh, sap is really important. Okay. So, I sap him. I develop my blade and deadly poison. I also develop patient assassin, and now it's all about aggression. So, if he actually wants to play the Boldvis Ogre again this turn, he also needs to taunt it, otherwise he will lose. Right? And the thing is, he also needs to clear the patient assassin, otherwise he will lose whatever big taunt he plays. Ah, you fucker. Bold of his dog, right? So I still want to stay out of the range of swipe and stuff like that. Engaging TC until dislocate. Uh, and because of that, I can't attack with my weapon to a creature. Okay. Well, no machine venter goes out first. Croc. Okay. Bloodfin. So I know that that card is the Bold of Visoga, and unless that card is Starfire, I should win this game. Starfire or uh, Force of Nature. What to do? Starfire, Force of Nature. That's about it, really. Swipe doesn't even do it, because I didn't attack with my hero ability. Sorry, I didn't attack with my face into a creature. So I have enough health to sustain hero power plus swipe. That's what I was trying to play around. Because swipe is a very fucking common card. You pick it if you get off and swipe. You pick swipe. Okay, so this turn, I still don't die to swipe, but now I also don't die to, um... Oh, well played. Well played. But now I also don't die to Starfire, because Starfire does 5 damage, he would also need to use his hero ability, and he's blocked by 2 taunts. <sighs> 2 taunts because this guy has a death rattle that summons a taunt. All right, um, I have less confidence in this deck now. I think that misplay at the start was very, very important. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Because he did Wrath as a response. He wouldn't have been able to do Wrath and develop something as a response. But then I also wouldn't have ended up with such a good Valia quest in Adventure. Uh, I can't, I can't track down that train of thought to see whether or not it would have been better or worse for me. I need to rely on getting a better 3 than that. Even though I don't have many better 3s than that, I need to fish for one. And you know what? I would consider a uh, a Deadly Poison as a 3 drop in this deck. Because the River Croc is a 2, and then on 3 I summon Daggers and I play Dagger Mastery. Sorry, Dagger Mastery. I summon daggers, and I deadly poison them in order to kill something. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to draw any of my deadly poisons. Holy shit! He has nothing. Fuck place. yes. It's got to be, yeah, Shadow of Pain. Really? Hoot hoot. 
Okay, so to stay on curve, I'll attack with this and summon the no mission venter. Next turn, I can have a huge frost with warlord. Silver moon shall not Oh my god. Power word shield. Someone called Well, this hardly seems fair. The frost wolves stand ready. Hey, give me a minute. Quest accepted. So I end up with a 7 7 and 2 2. Um, Shadow Word Death or Silence. <clears throat> Those are his two big outs. And he already used the silence on a questing adventurer that was not yet buffed. <sighs> shadow word death or silence. That's not a shadow word death. And that is very rarely a silence. Do I ignore a harvest golem? I think so. Because I don't think there's anything huge that he can do on the 6 mana point that he couldn't do on the 5 mana point. Uh, especially considering he has the coin. So, like, the worst thing I could imagine would have been Holy Fire onto the um, Cross of Warlord and then the attack, right? And that evidently didn't happen. Okay, how much damage do I have purely in hand? Uh, Deadly Poison makes three. Eviscerate makes that seven. So even if the Gnomish Inventor dies, I still have lethal. Now I don't. Uh, I would need to draw Sap to have lethal now. That is not Sap, but it is a great card. Deadly Poison... Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Rogue can just sometimes just take control of the game and go, Cool, this is my game now. This is now called Valera Hearthstone. Um, Anduin not accepted. Uh, and that's game over. Well played. <sighs> Oh, come on, Jigrate 555. Five sixths of the devil's number. Come on, just play nice. Just let me hit you in the face with my weapon and my gigantic um, dude. Now, that is a huge example of the importance of an early curve. So he didn't have a two drop and he didn't have a three drop. That's why I won. That is 100% the only reason I won that game. He didn't have either... I, that is such a good 3-drop that I'm going to keep it because I don't have any 3-drops in this deck. But that is 100% why I won that game. There is literally no other reason. Um, Dread Corsair can be pretty good as a 4-drop because I dagger, poison, and then drop the Dread Corsair. For one. So that could be good. Um, I'm going to swap to water now. Because I am still on medication for the amount of time that I was sick. Yay, pharmaceuticals. <clears throat> this episode of Hearthstone Arena brought to you by an incredible amount of antibiotics. Today is the first day that my voice has been back in tip-top shape. I can actually speak in different volumes, in different tones, with different intonation. It's perfect. It's brilliant. It's lovely, and it's something I haven't been able to do in quite some time. 
I don't like being sick, and especially due to the fact that I lost so much footage beforehand, it actually caused me to have to stop publishing content on the channel. That made me fucking salty, man. Oh, God. I really don't like having to leave you, um, leave the channel without content. I'd love to draw a two drop next turn. Hmm. I'm trying to think of a way that I can actually curve this. Um, since I have the coin and since I have Deadly Poison and Dread Corsair, I can curve this. It's just how. Alright, now I know how I have to curve this. Coin. Imp Master. Because he doesn't have a 2-drop. So he's not posing a threat to the Imp Master. So I can just fucking play a 3-drop into a 3-drop. It doesn't matter. And the really important thing is I can backstab plus use an Imp to clear almost... Exactly. Almost any fucking card that he can play. And I know I could have killed that and kept the imp on the board if I moved this down to two. But the problem with that is it means it is super swipe bait. Right? I end up with a lot of 1-1s one on my field and this one's rapidly becoming a 1-1. One -one. It becomes swipe bait. I must safeguard the land. Okay. So again, to stop the swipe bait, I'm going to trade the lower guy in. And it ended up working in my favor. That's weird, the way that that would not play. Um, but yeah, it ended up working in my favor to end up getting the Dread Corsair out as my 4-drop, but through using the Wicked Knife. So I now have a board that's hugely above him. If he can swing it, Fine, he can swing it. That's that's okay. Um, but at this point, it's not a good swipe board because he can kill a total of two things with swipe. He can kill the Imp and he can kill the Dread Corsair. And that's a very powerful card to use to kill an Imp and a Dread Corsair. Fucker. Why do my opponents always have this piece of shit? So, I'm developing the D Dark Iron Dwarf for one very important reason. I need dudes on the board. I need feet on the ground, motherfucker, and I have none right now. Well, I don't have much. But I know I love ya. That's, uh, that's... <clears throat> very old song. <sighs> Just play a Sunwalker, and I'll assassinate it, and we'll all be very- Well, I mean, I'll be, but you won't, but there will be happy. I guarantee you that much. For the Lich King! You fucker, I- <sighs> You're gonna have a very stern conversation. Shields up! Does that look like I can target it with Assassinate, huh? 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 Fucking Phoenix! Ancient of War. I need to start getting my Gnomish Inventors for the card draw engine. Hello, Gnomish Inventor, for the card draw engine. Give me a d uh, d d yeah, Deadly Poison, thank you. Here 
So my deepest, darkest desire right now is to draw a Deadly Poison off the top of the deck and he plays something with 8 mana that he thinks is just really big. So like Iron Bark Protector, right? That's what I'm looking for. Give me the Iron Bark Protector. I'll send it back to your hand. I'll attack your face a bunch. And then you play it again. And then I'll assassinate it, motherfucker. I don't give a shit. If he plays big dudes now, he will lose. He needs swing. <clears throat> it's all about swing. It's all about faith and a deeper devotion. It's all about swing. The woman's got swing, man. Come on, Phoenix. I will fire these rocks at you until Ragnarok, motherfucker. Jesus Christ, play your cards. Play the big one. That's it. Yes. Hey, give me a minute. I got this. Here we go. Play it again, Johnny. Oh no. We must cleanse the sun. <laughs> oh yes. Well played. Here we go. I got this. <laughs> oh, it's good fun. Oh, it's good fun. And the thing is, if I'd assassinated it the first time, he would have just played something else that turn. And then I would have had to deal with that. So the sap actually works out really good because I can bounce something big back and then they go, fine. They lose a turn's worth of tempo. They play it again and then they die. Oh, and it's brilliant. You can hear their soul crush. I love it. Valir versus Three seven six Diro. Sunfury Protector. Is that a curve? Is that a curve? You know what? If I get backstabs, that's a curve. Did Deadly Poison that make that a curve? Deadly Poison doesn't make that occur. What if I... Dagger... This turn? Oh my god! This is gonna work! Okay. Okay, 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 right. I Dagger this turn, and then I pass. Don't play anything scary. Or at the very least, I need to draw a backstab if you can. Right. I'm still gonna do it. Questing adventurer, coin, deadly poison, kill. And then I end up with a deadly poison and a questing adventurer. And I get to use my coin in an optimal fashion. Worst case scenario for me right now is silence. He silences the questing adventurer and then he kills it for, well, free with his zombie chow. Mm. And then I cry. If it's a spellbreaker, it's not so bad because I get to kill the spellbreaker with my three my uh, dagger. With my three dagger, with my dagger. Quest accepted. Okay. Okay. All right. Sludge Belcher next turn. We've or he's got five cards. We've got two on the board that are incredibly powerful and six in hand. Right. So we've already way outvalued him. Oh my god. Evi no, Eviscerate, yeah? Yeah, you needed to be comboing something out for that play to make any sense at all. Do I want to kill his thing instantly? 
Because that would be the Assassin's Blade. Yes. Here we go. And the reason that is okay is because I have a Deadly Poison, but I also have a bunch of really good 5 drops in hand. So I can next turn, most likely, with my Deadly Poison, just deal with whatever he plays. And then... Alright, I can't deal with whatever he plays, so... Instead... It's time to go face hunting. So I'm thinking that he's on 13 health right now, right? That's that's what I'm visualizing in my mind's eye. Uh, where's my sap? Cold blood. It had to be cold blood. That's a frost with warlord. That is not a sap. That is, nine times out of ten, not a sap. So I have lost a large amount of my direct damage, and I keep going for his face. This is a mistake. I am making mistakes. All he needs to do is kill this without using the Sea Giant, and I likely lose. Because now I'm taking 8 damage this turn at the very least. 9 damage this turn at the very least. Um, and without Assassinate or, um, Sap from the top deck, I will lose. Yeah. That was a really big mistake that I made. Uh, this is the best turn that I can do. And it's still gonna lose me the game. Here we go. <laughs> well played. Yep, I, I, yeah. That's <laughs> my bad. Entirely my bad. I fucked that one up. Royally. You know what? I'm very glad at the very least uh, that I managed to know that I'd fucked it up before I got, you know, dealt lethal because of it. Because... If I was sitting there going, this is the correct play, oh, da, 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 da. if I was doing that the whole time, uh, and then I still died, that's worse. At the very least, even if it wasn't enough foresight, I had some level of foresight. Backstab and deadly poison in the opening hand means that I keep. I also throw away the Priestess of Loon, obviously, because it takes six mana, and I am only going to have one or two. Uh, a very interesting turn for me would be... No, that doesn't work, because I don't have the coin. Oh, well. oh, look, a backstab. I could have a really big questing adventurer. I just need him to have really slow opener. So, nothing this turn. Right? <clears throat> we need to have a discussion on the definition of nothing. That's fine, because I can kill it. Now I also need nothing this turn. I have to do this for the respect of my curve. Here we go. How many ways does a warrior have to deal one damage that I'm scared of? Not that many. <clears throat> Cruel Taskmaster is obviously one. 
Yeah, she'll slam. It's fine, slam takes up most of his time. <sighs> this is a problem. All of my stuff right now is very reactive, and I have none of my minions. Probably should have just gone all the way with that guy. That would have been casting the backstab, and then I end up with a stronger minion. Uh, that's a 3-3, therefore I cast the Assassin's Blade and attack. He attacked my face. This is interesting. The fact that he attacked my face means that he either has a very aggressive deck, or he's an idiot. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and guess that he has a very aggressive deck. I mean, he did play a charge minion. Uh, I can Deadly Poison to kill that, or I can Backstab to kill that. Depends on what I draw. So therefore, Deadly Poison's probably better. So I am rapidly running out of health. That is, that is a issue that we have to contend with. My health points are no. I'll put it on your hands. I am very quickly killing myself. But I believe that I have to to win this game. So I'm just going to hope to see my next Priestess of Balloon really soon. Priestess of Balloon. <laughs> I'll stop. Yeah. Let the pain speak to me. I, I'm just hoping that the guys get. Oh, there's another one. Ah. I'm just hoping that the guys that he plays start slowing down in terms of size. Do I want to assassinate just because of the size of that one? That'd be so slow. So many options. There are so many options, actually. I think I have to assassinate. And I can't let him draw two cards, so I'll attack there, and then Ruben Clark. And there's no reason to attack with my weapon just yet. <clears throat> really did not want to have to use the assassination in that situation, but um, my board state is very, very, very bad for him. It's going to take him a lot to get back. Okay, I'm very glad to see that used. Because I don't want to get him to down to like 11 and then three mortal strikes hits my face and I lose the game. <laughs> it's time for a little blood. I'm likely to kill that with a Dark Iron Dwarf. Yeah. And I'm putting it on the River Crocolisk and attacking with the River Crocolisk for one very important reason. I do not want to have Cleave kill two of my guys. Okay. I can Knight Reaper. He must have a lot of damage to be so sure that he can use all of that for my face. I you know what? I'm gonna play the Priestess of Balloon this turn. And hit the face in Dagger Mastery. Because I think I want him to try and overextend his board state uh, before I play the Sludge Belcher so that I can stop his tempo. Oh, right, execute. Execute. That's a backstab. The frost wolves stand ready. Well, he would have to kill his own frost wolf warlord some. Here we 
I go for the face. I believe that's the strategy here. I also could have considered double deadly poison attack the face. But the thing is, uh, I don't want to give him the opportunity to armor up. Out of my ability to kill him. Oh, what's that? Mortal Strike again? This guy has a very aggressive deck from everything I've seen so far. Uh, okay. That is a problem. That is definitely a problem. I can kill the Frost with Warlord. How much health can I ca t take? I can't give him another card from Cult Master, can I? I wonder. So, Assassin's Blade, Deadly Poison, Deadly Poison, right? It's a total of seven damage. I would need to survive enough turns to make use of all seven damage. A total of three times to win the game. Hmm. But next turn, I am going to take 14 damage. I can heal myself by five in order to take only 14 damage. And that's barring anything that comes from the top deck as well. So I can take 12 per turn. Isn't going to be enough. I think I just lose. That freeze. Yeah, if he top decks more cards than me, he will win the game. Uh, yeah, I think I've just lost. Mathematically, I could not figure out a way that I could hit him more times than he can hit me. Yep. So the best I can do is kill that, eviscerate, I don't know. Yeah. Well played. Here we go. God fucking damn it. I don't think I deserve that loss. But you know. Hearthstone is a cruel mistress. Sometimes you get what you deserve and sometimes you don't. Can't always have what you want, but if you try sometimes, you might just find that you get what you need. And since we've gone to two losses, I'm not going to take this to a part two. Man, I was so sure this- Ah, You know what? Fuck it. This deck can still go eight wins. I just need to believe at myself. I need to have belief. I too can win this game. Sun Fury Protector into the Master is actually a pretty good curve. Unless he plays a 2-3. 3-2, that's fine. Because now that he's already used the coin, there is no way in hell that he could have buffed that with a um, <clears throat> Shattered Sun Cleric. But at the same time, yeah, kill it anyway. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Why? Why would you coin out a two if you didn't have a follow-up? I got this. Okay, so my next turn, this is amazing. Uh Dagger Mastery, Deadly Poison, plus the Dread Corsair. Why would you coin a two if you did not have a follow-up? Let's think about it. If he was looking to protect the, uh, that with, um, with like, mirror image, maybe? But why would you do that? Fade. 
Yeah, maybe if you were looking to protect something. But if you didn't have a 2 as a follow-up. Maybe he had a 1 and he didn't want to play it. I have more deadly poisons in the deck. This is fine. That minion needs to die. The water elemental is a fucking amazing. Uh, especially against classes with weapons. It's absurd. So it did need to die as soon as possible. I am the blade. No! Okay, keep going for the face. Is that my strategy? Face strats? Uh, Blizzard. Yeah, Blizzard. That, that would be my expected response. Hmm. What to do? What to do? Glory Dante, the mage, do you have Blizzard? You've already used coins, so you don't have flame strike, you fucker. And it's fine that this is alive during his turn, because there's no way he can... Well, there is no reasonable way for him to kill it. So, uh, he's not going to be summoning a lot of minions. Which means he would have to place things... Well played! Well played! Well played. Fuck yeah, man! Well played! Have you ever seen that card used ever effectively? Well played. Here we go. I got it. But that actually tells me that he doesn't have a lot of spells in hand. So you might have flame strike. That's about it though. Cuz if he had a lot of spells in hand, well actually no. That that, that, that was a really good play. So why would he not play that? That would be a priority play. How does that tell me he doesn't have spells? It doesn't. Hmm. Tells me that he doesn't have a three mana spell in hand, I guess. Which means he doesn't have Frostbolt. That's what that means. That, that play tells me that his hand, unless this is the card Frostbolt, does not contain Frostbolt. Dude. My dream is I play Gadgetson. I've drawn I've drawn a deadly poison off the top of the deck. Here we go. Deadly poison. See, there we go. Right? Then I play Gadgetson and I play Deadly Poison and then I draw Deadly Poison. And that would be my dream. Give me a quest. I got the best deal here anyway. Okay, so he can have another flame strike. But his health is quickly dwindling. It's getting to the point that as soon as I draw Eviscerate, he loses. And the only thing right now that saves him is another Eviscerate. Crossbot. Ooh, I can Golem. You have to run that into my dude. Here we go. Now, Eviscerate is something that you keep as an ace in the hole, because there is nothing in my entire deck that costs more than 8 mana. So no matter what I draw next turn, I can play Eviscerate. Oh, also I only need to play it for 2 damage to win the game. So. Here we go. I am the player. Well played. Well played. <sighs> and that's the end of that game. What are we up to? 5... 4-2? Four, 4-2, two? Four, two, I believe. Not 5-2. I'd love to get 5-2. Oh my god, I dream of 5-2. 
I wake up after a dream about 5-2 and I have to use a goddamn toffee hammer to get my pants off. Jesus Christ. 5-2? Oh. Man, I want that 8. I said I was going to get 8 and I don't like lying. I know it wouldn't exactly count as lying because I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known. It was a prediction. But motherfucker, I want to be Nostra goddamn Damus with my predictions. I want to be every single time on point, regardless of the fact that Nostra Damus was rarely ever not at all right in the fact that you have to work your own interpretations in it to actually get anything useful. Regardless of all of that, <clears throat> want to be Nostra Damus. Patient Assassin is going back. I would like some of my more solid two drops, please. Ones that are not so vulnerable to consecration. Hey, look at that! A two drop that is not incredibly vulnerable to consecration. Woo, yeah. It's me waving a flag. The pleasure is mine. Neko Barker. Isn't that like stupid cat? Isn't that what that means? It's, it's um weeaboo for stupid cat. Cat stupid? Because it's cat first? Well met. I don't know, man. It's not my language. Most weeaboo shit I'm into is... It's, I sometimes dig anime. Reporting for duty. So, this is interesting. Do I wreck my curve by coining the Acolyte of Pain? No. Shield. Because the Acolyte of Pain was almost guaranteed a card draw. But I'd have to trade my coin for it, which is about half a card's worth of value. I mean, think about it, it's literally half a card worth of value, it's half an innovate, right? I want Do I think that would have been valuable? You know what? I'm not certain. If you have an opinion as to whether... In this play, so your opponent does Silverhand Knight, right? Silverhand Recruit, and you're playing second. So you can coin out an Acolyte of Pain as a response. Would you do it? Because I've I've been in matchups before where I've considered it, and I've been in matchups before where I have done it. And the reason that you want to do the coin, so do it first, is because the later you do it, you end up in a situation where your opponent can true silver champion, and they can get value. And that's not good. So... The fact that I used coin Deadly Poison next turn means that it was wrong. I should have coined the... Sorry, I, I should have um, played the Acolyte of Pain. Because I was going to use three mana the turn after. And that was my co concern, right? Am I certain to use three mana next turn? And I didn't think I was. Hmm. I was wrong. So in this situation, I should have uh, coined the Acolyte of Pain. And actually, considering that he was moving into turn three, he couldn't play anything um, as a as a paladin before the GVG update. He couldn't play anything with four mana. Let me four health, see. sorry. Well, four health that I cared about. So, there's no reason for me to have not coined the Acolyte of Pain. There we go. I've worked through it. I have resolved my issues. I was going to ask for... Your input in the comments section below, which you are still free to give if you would like. Um, but I, I have solved the problem, friends. Get in there and fight, maggot! Move quickly. Let the pain that is a really good draw. I got this. Here we go. Because it rounds out my play for that turn. It means that I don't have to coin re-dagger or something stupid like that to try and end my turn. Uh, interesting enough is Assassin's, Break, uh, Assassin's Blade plus coin plus Deadly Poison is almost universally going to be my play. And there it is, yeah. Told you, almost universally that was going to be the play that I was going to make in response to almost anything.
looks like to say on curve, Priestess of Loon is my play next turn. Unless I draw a Deadly Poison and I want to play Gadgets and Auctioneer into Deadly Poison to kill something. The odds of that are very low, though. Now, I want to make sure that the Acolyte of Pain takes damage before a Consecrate, and also that I trade off lower minions, like the Acolyte of Pain and the Sun Fury Protector, before I get damage on my um, Zombie Chow. Because the Zombie Chow, as soon as he takes damage, well, he is now part of the Consecration. And I would like if Consecration did not kill my Zombie Chow, please. So this play basically means Sun Fury Protector hits the Fairy Dragon and then Acolyte of Pain hits the Silver Hand. I, got this. I should have hit that first, just in case I drew something that I wanted to play, but I didn't. Now, the most common response that I would guess to see from this is I just played a 6-drop, 5-4. He plays a true Super Champion and kills it. That is what I would expect to see. So, True Super Champion plus something on 3 mana. Nothing. That's unfortunate. Interesting. I can kill that with the Patient Assassin. Or, I can hold on to the Patient Assassin. Use oh, Deadly Poison? Or I could develop a recess of a loon. You know what? The Deadly Poison is better. I wasn't even considering that at the time. I was considering Sludge Belcher plus Patient Assassin and then attack the face. Or Sludge Belcher, Patient Assassin, attack the face with um, the Zombie Chow and use the Priestess of a loon plus the Acolyte of Pain to trade into the Guardian of Kings. That's also a solid play. Acolyte of Pain dies to Consecration no matter what. And if I want to develop the Patient Assassin, I need to be aware of the fact that I'm going to be Consecrated if he's on the board. Therefore, I shouldn't even use the Deadly Poison. I should just use the Acolyte of Pain as part of the damage that I hit to the face. Sorry, as part of the damage that I used to take down the... Um... Guy. Okay. That was correct. Now I feel a lot better. That was, I believe, far and away the best thing I could have done that turn. With respect to both my curve and setting up for whatever he does this turn. So there we go, right? That justifies the trading off of the 1-2, because the 1-2 was collateral damage to that consecration anyway. So he wants to develop something big. Otherwise, why would you waste a Consecration just to kill a 1-1? One, one, unless he has another Consecration. Reporting for duty. Now, I kill it with the 5-1 rather than the 3-3, obviously, to avoid another Consecration, right? Um, I kill it with the 3-3, it goes down to a 3-2, three, three and I also have a 5-2, and then they both die to a Consecration. This way, the 5-2 was already going to die to a Consecration, now it'll only still die to a Consecration. Um, there are also another few things that will hit it now, like Mad Bomber RNG, Elven Archer, you know... It's in the range of a few more things. But the most common thing that it would have already been in range of is Consecration. So that's the one that I want to play around. Hmm. Come on, buddy. Questing adventurer wants to go for a walk. Let's take it for a walk, Johnny. Give me a quest. Blood and blunder. I am the blade of the darkness. Here we go. 
Okay, so there's um, almost nothing he can do now. Deathwing? Yeah, Deathwing does it. Deathwing always does, though, so. It's not exactly special. So there's the Consecrate that actually only kills the 5 1. So, unless he has another Consecration to back that up. And that would be three Consecrations, right? So, at that point, you can accept that I've probably not been playing around. Well, I'm probably not playing around, you know, the third Consecration in his hand. And he still has half of his deck, you know, left to be drawn. I got the best deals anywhere. I already have lethal, by the way. This was just about building the lethal in an insane way. Well played. Not even gonna use my seven damage weapon. You're not worthy. You aren't worthy of Mjolnir. I know it was a dagger and not a hammer. But I'm not playing Paladin. And Paladin has Light's Justice. That's probably like the closest thing to Mjolnir. Ooh, the fuck is in here? Sorry, I have a file now, um, and I filed a lot of things before, but now I have a miscellaneous file that has just everything that I don't know what, where it goes. And it confuses me. Uh, all of that has to go back. Except for the Deadly Poison, Deadly Poison can stay. Uh, I don't know what I believe. Yeah, there we go. Whew. Greetings, traveler. The Greetings. Pleasure is mine. Okay. There's no reason for me to uh, coin anything this turn. Because River Croc goes out next turn. Hey, okay by me. <laughs> Do I play the patient assassin just to piss him off? Um, this is really bad against Shattered Sun Cleric. I just hope, I just have to hope that he doesn't have it. <laughs> okay, that is way worthwhile for me. <laughs> this is stupid. I'm gonna lose so much hell, and against the Hunter, I've, I've probably lost this match, I'll tell you that right now, right? This is my opening hand, I've probably lost this match. Because I need to kill this Hunter, but I also need to not die. Um, and at this point, it looks like I'm going to die. Because I take two damage from him, I deal two damage to myself per turn. I can make that a 7 damage weapon. <clears throat> as soon as I get the, uh... You know what? I'm gonna play this game full YOLO, right? So, I need him not to have more. I don't want to talk about it. Are you ready for full YOLO? Because, motherfuckers, I don't think you're ready for full YOLO. Full YOLO will be engaged next turn. Mm. 
Full YOLO, will we engage next time? Okay. Sure. Give me a quest. Here we go. Hey, give me a minute. Bring it, motherfucker. Come on. You know what? If he has taunts, I lose. If he <laughs> plays a big card, I lose. If he kills my minions, I lose. But if he can't do any of those things, and if he can't heal himself, we win. <laughs> Misdirection? Oh, are you kidding me? It was misdirection. All right. That, yeah, he wins. I, I was certain it was, uh, it was explosive trap. By the way, that's why I didn't. Yeah. All right, we lose. Oh. Well, we tried to go full YOLO, it didn't work out. Here we go. I knew he had a Mogashan in hand as well. Hmm. Put this apple on your head. Lethal? There we go. Well played. I was going to lose that anyway. No matter how I played that game, I was going to take enough damage from my own removal of his minions with my deadly poisons that I was going to lose. Um, so I decided to try and have fun with it. At five wins, you know what? That's way better than the 0-3 that I predicted. Let's just ignore the 8-3 that I predicted. So open our packs for a total of 95 gold, open our, sorry, open our treasure boxes, treasure chests, whatever you want to call them, for a total of 95 gold, and open our packs for a total of 40 dust. Of course. Oh, we got a wisp! Alright, let's get back to the title screen so that I can say that my name has been Rhapsody, name of the game has been Hearthstone Arena, name of the episode is going to be Deadly Poison just because... Well, there were four of them. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourself, and if you have, please click like. It does help me get my content out to new people. There's also a playlist down in the description below if you want to watch more of my content now, or later, or any of the content I've ever made for Hearthstone. There's Arena, Naxxramas, Ranked, and there is going to be more Ranked soon. Ranked season will be starting back up this holiday season with the Goblins vs. Gnomes expansion. Happy to announce that. Which I've announced in the comment section before. So read the comments. Ah, hopefully you've been enjoying yourself and we'll see you next time.